In this video, I'm going to be talking about posture when painting and studio setup in your area and a couple of tips for developing really um, helpful habits and um, things to keep in mind when we're working in the studio. Okay, so there are a few things that I want to go over. The first thing is posture. So when you're painting, um, there are things about our posture that influence the way that we work that we might not already be considering and how that influences um, our results, how we feel while we're working, and just the overall efficiency of our work area. And some of that starts with our posture. So when you're setting up your workspace, there are a few things that generally are good to keep in mind. The first thing is how much room you have around your peers. So find an area that uh, allows for accessibility all the way around your easel and your cart or your table that you're painting on, whether you have a chair or a stool, um, try to keep enough room for people to be able to really walk through the studio around your area. The second thing is at your easel, um, it really helps if you keep your palette on whichever side of your body uh, that your dominant hand is on. So for me being right-handed, I tend to keep my palette on the right side of my body. It allows me to quickly just look over since my arm is already facing in this direction to mix my paints and my colors, to grab other materials and to just sort of keep everything organized on one side. It wouldn't really make a lot of sense if I had to turn all the way around to mix my colors and then look at my canvas or my easel. The other thing that is helpful about this is that when you're painting and you're looking at your palette with your colors and then you're painting and if you're trying to match a color or respond to a color in the painting, the amount of time that we spend looking at the painting and then at the palette can influence our memory of the colors in the painting. It sounds a little crazy, but it's true. Now imagine if you were painting here and your palette was behind you, or let's say even farther away. The amount of time that you spend walking across the room to grab your color, walking back to your painting, is going to impact the way that you're thinking about the color that you just mixed. Sometimes what will happen is you'll mix your color, put it on the canvas, and think, wow, that looks a lot different on the canvas than it did on my palette. And some of that is this is because of this reason. So in one of my other videos, the palette video, I talked about a vertical palette that is sitting next to your painting. That really cuts some of that time out of um, using your memory uh, versus using what you're actually looking at. And either way, you're always gonna use your memory since you can't look at your palette and your painting at the same time. You always have to break from one to the other, but sort of cutting that time between the two is gonna help um, keep your colors where you want them to be. The other thing that's important about posture and the location of your palette box and your um, chair and your easel is that if you're sitting down, chances are you're gonna get really comfortable sitting down at your easel. That's not a bad thing. Being comfortable is important when we're working. However, you don't wanna be so comfortable that you don't get up and move away from your artwork to see your artwork from a different distance. The reason why it's important to do this is so that you can see your painting at different scales of depth. And a lot of times what will happen is when we back away from our painting, we'll start to see it in a new way and problems or issues within the painting that we didn't notice before become apparent. And then we can address those problems when we get back to our easel. That's the, one of the most important things about location between yourself and the artwork um, and reminding yourself that, hey, I've been sitting for a really long time. I should probably stand up and see my painting from a distance. One thing that I'll advise students to do often is to take their painting off their easel while it's still in progress, take it to the hallway or another room and place it against the wall or farther away. And that can also start to reveal some issues within the painting or some things that are working that maybe you didn't see before either. Um, so having a chair is definitely okay in the studio. Um, I just wouldn't get used to sitting for the entire class um, and just start to build that habit of looking at your painting from different locations. Sometimes what I'll do in my studio here is I'll, I'll be working for maybe 20 or 30 minutes and then I'll put my brushes down and I'll step on the other side of the room and look at my painting and try to see it at more of a compressed 
um, manageable scale. Another thing that you can do if you're working in a very shallow amount of space is to photograph your painting, crop the painting so it's just the painting. It's not anything else in the room or the wall. And you can minimize that either on your phone or even just having it on the size of your phone is going to do the same thing of pulling everything together, allowing you to see those big relationships of shapes and value and color um, and to address some of those problems maybe you didn't see before. So those are a few tips on really staying on top of what's going on on the big scale of your work um, and, and some strategies to sort of combat those challenges. The other thing that I want to mention um, about posture is this idea of proximity between yourself and your painting or your easel. Some artists will start painting really, really close to their canvas. That's okay. You know, it's, there's no right or wrong way to paint. There's just pros and cons or effects of working a certain way that maybe are hurting you more than they're helping you. And one of the biggest things about working really close to your surface is that you're, you're totally, you know, not seeing the big picture of your artwork. You kind of start to develop this like narrow view of only part of the painting, right? And that can be really problematic because then areas of the painting might not connect in a way that makes sense or feel natural or it's creating an effect that maybe you don't actually like in the work. Um, and a lot of times that's the reason why is because you're not looking at the big full composition. So your, your proximity between you and the canvas is really important for that reason. The other thing is that if you're working really close, your brush that you're using, you might only be using the like feral part of the brush, the very like front part of where the actual tip of the brush is and the closest part of the handle. And that really limits the amount of mobility that you have to create marks on your canvas. Now, if you move your hand back to the other end of the brush, now all of a sudden my wrist movement isn't changing, but the amount of like, like area that I can cover with my brush starts to really open up. The same thing happens when you hold your brush at the end and you paint more from your shoulder or your elbow than just your wrist. Uh, Matisse is an artist who, who is famous for really pushing the boundaries of this idea. He would take a brush and attach it to a broomstick and stand on the other side of his room and be painting like seven or eight feet away from his canvas and making really big gestural lines and marks that would be really hard to do if you were holding your brush like this. So again, there's no right or wrong way to paint. There's just options that we need to be aware of so we can make better informed decisions in the studio. So I challenge everybody this semester to at least once um, in this semester, drastically change the way that you're either holding your brush or standing at your easel making your work and just see what can happen. A lot of times you'll end up finding new strategies or tricks or solutions to making certain decisions in your paintings that you wouldn't be able to get with our everyday process, our, our bigger habits. So um, right now that's pretty much all I can think of to fit in this video. Um, the, I guess the last thing I can say is a little bit about lighting. Um, and that is to make sure that if you are working with spotlights, either at home or in a studio space, just be mindful, right? Try to place things in a location where they're not going to be easily tipped over. Um, you don't want to be knocking over light bulbs and breaking light bulbs, um, or the like electronics of lights, um, cause that can get really expensive and just take a lot of time away from painting, which is what we're trying to do more of, right? Okay. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll try some of these ideas out this semester. Um, and again, just try to keep an open mind to some of these strategies. So thanks for watching this one and I'll see you in class or uh, I'll see you at some other time. Okay.